you should know that the WeBoost Overland external antenna cracks before you can even hit the trail. After several replacements, WeBoost sent me one more, but this time the antenna is from their OTR kit. In this video, we will find out if the WeBoost OTR antenna is actually more rugged than the external antenna from their Overland kit. If you are new to this channel, I recently purchased the WeBoost Overland kit. What originally attracted me to this kit is the WeBoost stating that this kit is specifically designed for overlanding. The kit includes a folding mount so that you can fold down your antenna when not in use or when you need additional overhead clearance. And the kit also provides a plastic holder into which when folded, the antenna is securely snaps in so that it does not rattle and hit the roof. The problem with the Overland external antenna is that when the antenna is snapped into the plastic holder, the vibration and the force lead to the antenna cracking under stress. I now had a total of three external antennas crack. So to try something new, WeBoost sent me the antenna from their OTR kit. So a couple of days ago, I received the OTR external antenna. But after three failures with the Overland antenna, I was really hesitant to even attempt to install it and have it break on me again. But I realized that putting this antenna through the same stress test as the previous three, this is the only way to find out if the OTR antenna is more durable. To find out if there is a difference, I will first do a side-by-side -side physical comparison of the Overland and the OTR antenna. I will then conduct a stress test by snapping the OTR antenna into the plastic holder which basically destroyed the previous three Overland antennas. If you're interested, I demonstrated that in previous videos linked in the description below. So let's find out if the OTR external antenna survives the dreaded plastic mount that defeated the three Overland antennas or if it will come out victorious. Okay, so let's first examine the physical differences of the two antennas. Here we can see that they basically look the same. The only observable difference that I can see is that the Overland antenna comes with a short, roughly uh, two feet cable, whereas the OTR antenna comes with about 15 to 18 foot long cable. The construction of the plastic body of the antenna is very similar without major observable differences. Just by looking at it, I cannot determine if it is made of different type of plastic or not. The only observable difference is the logo. The Overland antenna has a logo printed on it and the OTR antenna's logo is stamped into the body of the antenna. Besides that, both antennas look, feel and weigh basically the same. Okay, for the second part of the comparison, we will conduct the same stress test that I conducted previously for the Overland external antenna. The test will be recorded with the GoPro to see the real-time effects, as well as the iPhone for the slow motion. To give this antenna a fighting chance, I did not install it or snap it into the plastic holder until it is ready for testing. All right, and here's the installed antenna ready for testing. And by the way, I'm sure you're aware, plastic gets really brittle in the cold. And the outside temperature right now is 23 degrees, which is colder than when the previous antennas failed. So it is actually perfect weather for testing. Okay, and finally, here's the moment you've been waiting for. So let's get ready to rumble. OTR antenna versus the dreaded plastic Holder.
And the winner is... All right, so I completed the test and it looks like this OTR antenna actually survived it. I do not see any cracking and it actually feels a lot more solid than the previous three antennas which were designed for the Overland. So it looks like this OTR antenna is actually a lot better suited for the environment that we're going to be taking this into. All right, so at least as of this stage of the test, I have to say that the OTR antenna is tougher than the Overland antenna. Or is it? Okay. It is roughly 36 hours since the stress test. I am in my garage. My spotty sense told me to check the antenna. Lo and behold, the OTR antenna started to develop cracks as well. So it looks like neither the WeBoost Overland antenna nor the WeBoost OTR antenna is tough enough to stand up to the challenge of the plastic holder provided with the WeBoost Overland kit. Unfortunately, all four antennas, the three Overland antennas and the OTR antenna were defeated by the clinch of the plastic holder. I am kind of in a loss for words. I really wanted the system to work. Unfortunately, it seems to be the flaw in the design of the shape of the antenna, which in my opinion, simply is not made for rugged environment. This antenna may be suited to be sitting on the roof of your vehicle, but in my opinion, there is room for improvement when it comes to handling vibration or stress that may come with driving on a dirt road or trail. I think one of the solutions is to have the antenna padded down with something while it is folded down. Or maybe wrap it with electric tape to reinforce the neck of the body of the antenna. But in my opinion and my advice is definitely do not let it just bounce on the roof of your vehicle or get hit by the branch while driving through trails. All right. So hopefully this video was helpful and was worth your time. Please let me know in the comments what you think and also like and subscribe to help the YouTube algorithm get this video to others who may find this video helpful. And once again, thank you for watching.